is the American army really powerful? Why is the American army fighting in Israel? What is promised to American soldiers? Honestly, truly, they have a military strength. They have weapons. They have training and ability. So in this way, yes, they are strong. The problem with the American army and with most armies around the world is that, that they have no psychological or spiritual strength. They have no base to stand upon. How many of the American soldiers, they come back and they've literally giving back their their awards, their medals, because they realized that they are fighting for something that is not true. They are taught something, they're given a sense of patriotism, but then they find out that no, you're not fighting for freedom, you're not fighting for democracy. In reality, you're fighting for the powerful to be more powerful, the wealthy to be wealthier. There is no strength. There is no moral base. There is no ethical foundation. There is nothing within the soldier to say that what I am doing is right. And as a result, they will come home with psychological problems. And many of them will end up killing themselves because they realize they killed for no reason. So that strength is only with those who believe in Allah and believe that what they're doing is for the sake of Allah. Allah has told us that there will be battles with the Jews and that these battles, some of them we will win and some of them we will lose. There's a lot of protests going on in the United States. There's a lot of people that are pro-Palestine. There are people opening the Quran and reading the Quran and learning Islam. And this is a victory. This is a victory of Allah. I honestly believe those people who have suffered in Gaza, the ones who have died, if they want to come back to this earth, it's only to die again for the sake of Allah. They're happy where they are. They have reached their goal. The victory has already begun. What's happening in the United States, what's happening in Europe, what's happening around the world, turn on TikTok and see all these people, Quran circles of non-Muslims, people accepting Islam right and left. That is victory. It's not the victory that you and I may have conceived, but it is a victory. It is Allah opening the doors and the hearts of the people to worship him. The Americans believe that Israel in the Middle East is a security. It is something that stops the Muslims. Gorbachev once said that nations do not die. You might try to destroy them. You might try to get rid of them. He said nations do not die. They survive and they remember. So why are you killing the babies? Because you want to make sure that they do not remember. That there's nobody left to fight back. I killed your father. I killed your mother. I'm going to have to kill you because you're going to grow up and you're going to try to come back for revenge. So they are afraid of this. They're afraid of the next generation growing up and coming back for revenge, like the generation that exists today. They are the survivors. They have not forgotten and they will continue to remember and there will always be survivors and there will always be people coming back to Allah. And this they will never be able to stop no matter how much they try. What is the true face of the American-Israeli friendship? One part of it is completely economic. Another political thing is that it, the Israeli Zionist lobby is very strong in the United States. And it's anybody who is political and has said anything against the Zionist entity, against Israel, against the Jews. They literally will destroy your political career. They will destroy your business. They make sure that nobody speaks against them and they have the money, they have the media campaign, they have everything that they need. And it's been in effect for a very long time. For, you know, I would say over a hundred years, they have been working upon the entity of Israel, the Zionist uh, entity. Many of the people who created this were not religious Jews. They were atheists. They were secularists. They did not believe in the religious place. They wanted to make a place of a cultural Jew homeland, and they utilized the idea of religion. They utilized the religious people, and they will push out to, to Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, and parts of Saudi Arabia and incorporate them. And nobody is stopping them because there is a huge weakness within the Muslim Ummah. We are attached to the life. 
The Prophet ﷺ, he promised us that this was coming, that we would be attacked as if we were trotters at a meal. They recognize that when Muslims believe in Allah, when Muslims put their faith in Allah, when Muslims attach their heart to the Akhirah, to the other world, and not to this world, they're undefeatable. I once was sitting with a friend of mine. Her father was one of the generals on our army base. And it was at a time when the Iranians had taken over the American embassy in Iran. And we were talking about the simple fact, why don't we just go annihilate them, just bomb them to death? I wasn't a Muslim. I didn't know Islam. And she said, I just discussed this with my father last night. And his answer to her was, when America and the West wants to destroy people, they make them afraid of annihilation. They make them afraid of death. The problem is that when Muslims have fear of Allah and they have faith and they have a belief in the afterlife and they want to reach the afterlife in a way that Allah is pleased with them, then they are ready to die for the sake of Allah. And this means that you do not have any psychological power over them. There is no terror. There is no fear. So you cannot control them. So your only recourse is to annihilate them. And they have tried so many different ways, trying to curtain them into what Lauren Booth calls a concentration camp, an open concentration camp, what is considered an open prison into Gaza. They've tried tried everything that they can and it's not working. And they now realize the only thing that will work is to get rid of every single Muslim on earth, starting with the ones that are in the way of their Messiah coming, starting with Gaza, starting with Palestine. Europe, there has been an uptick in interest about Islam. And in the United States, in South Africa, in Nigeria, in Japan, all over the world, there has been a desire to know what is this religion that makes a person say, oh Allah, oh Allah, and not why Allah, why Allah? What is this religion that allows a man to walk around carrying his children in a bag, pieces of his children in a bag? What is this religion that allows him to do this while worshiping and praising Allah? People are curious. People are having their hearts open. They're opening the Quran. They're listening to SubhanAllah lectures about Islam. They're learning about this beautiful deen and they are being guided by Allah as a result of all of this. The real true victory is going to be the opening of the hearts and the growth of our Islam and the knowledge in the people that Islam is true, that Allah is the one true God. La ilaha illallah. That is going to be the victory, as I said before. So what do you think about the misconceptions or stereotypes about Islam among the public that you would like to eliminate? I had the ability to clear up misconceptions about Islam. One of the first things I would do is, of course, I would try to get people to understand that Islam is not an oppressive religion, that Islam is not a religion where everything's forbidden, everything is not allowed, that you are stuck in this little cage and there's no happiness, there's no peace, there's no fun. This is not true. My cousin became a Muslim. And when he became a Muslim, he said, I never felt peace like the peace I felt the first time I prayed. I wish I had known about this before. Islam is a religion that, yes, there are things that are not allowed. There are things that we can't do, but they are things that lead to misery in this life. Things that lead to problems. We should avoid them. We should avoid those things that harm us. And the Quran is a manual on those things which will keep us safe, will keep us happy, will keep us at peace. That's the misconception I would love to take away from those who don't understand Islam. 